So moving on to our connector, we have a wire prepped. Um, I'll grab a Dean's connector here, and we'll take a look at... Now, I've already globbed some messy old solder in this Dean's connector, so we can kind of kill two birds with one stone. We're going to show how to remove solder, and we're also going to show how to solder on uh, fresh wires. Now, this is a, this is a typical <laughs> reused connector. Um, the fresh ones out of the bag are always nice because they don't have impurities all over them, but this one's been kicked around for a little while and soldered and desoldered. So what we're going to do is desolder it, first of all. Now, getting the solder molten is easy. Getting it off the connector can be difficult. You try to scrape it off with the tip of the, of the soldering iron, and you quickly find that, uh, that you've got solder flying all over the place. So um, we're going to go ahead and use what's called a solder sucker. Now, this solder sucker is nothing but uh, a small plunger, small vacuum plunger. You can buy these things are just a few bucks at uh, any electronic store. Uh, again, Radio Shack should have it. Uh, and you compress it, you push the plunger, and uh, as you push the button on the side here, it just has a small vacuum. And you can see it pulled the tip of my finger back. So all it's doing is quickly sucking in that molten solder away from you, and it tends not to blow anything towards you like uh, trying to scrape solder off and, and deal with it that way. So let's go ahead and liquefy the solder and see if we can get a little tighter shot on that so you can see what happens. We have a nice big bubbly bead here. Our solder sucker is loaded and we're going to push the button as soon as it gets molten. And you can actually touch it with the tip here. And there it is. Let's suck the solder up inside and you can now see that we have very minimal solder on that terminal. It actually is uh, all that's left is the tinning on it, so we don't have any excess at all, and this terminal is ready to accept the wire. So now we have a tin connector and a tin wire ready for soldering. Um, both of these uh, surfaces have been kept clean. We haven't played around with them since solder touched them last, and uh, they should adhere to each other quite well. Now, if you have an exposed pin connector or terminal connector like this Dean's connector, you're going to want to uh, uh, use some shrink tubing. Now, Dean's ship with a small piece of shrink tubing. Remember to put this on before. If you, this is a battery side connector, Dean's, by the way. So this is normally what you'd put on the battery. Um, so it's solid to the battery. You can't desolder that. And once you solidify your connector on your, on, uh, to, your, to your wire, your Dean's connector, you forget your, your heat shrink tubing. You have to desolder your perfect soldering job. So always stop for a second. Make sure you have your shrink tube on before you continue. It's a very common mistake. So. Uh, in this case, my other end is bare, so I can just slip it on, but we'll go ahead and put it on there anyway. I'm going to go ahead and flow a tiny bit of solder on the tip of this connector just to give it a little bit to work with. And I'm going to clean your tip, and there it's flowed on nicely. And that's going to give us plenty for a nice thick or a nice smooth fillet between the connector and the terminal. Hold it in place, it'll cool very rapidly. You can blow it on a little bit. As long as you hold it very still, don't be jiggling it all over the place. It'll, it'll uh, get out of control on you. And there we have an absolutely excellent uh, solder joint. If you notice, we have a nice fillet going from the wire down to the terminal connector on both sides. We don't have a huge gob of solder. Uh, we have a uh, good purchase across the uh, entire face of the connector, meaning the wire is almost touching up against the back of the connector. So we have plenty of surface contact area now. As long as we equal or, or uh, exceed the diameter of the wire with the contact point on the connector, we should end up with uh, an equal or greater uh, amount of, uh, of amperage handling off of that connection. Now, the connector itself, depending on the connector, may have loss between the two non-soldered contact surfaces, but Dean's connectors, uh, EC3 connectors, which are very uh, popular with um, uh, E-Flight and Park Zone and different ho Horizon Hobby brands, uh, these have a very low loss uh, um, coefficient, so they, they function almost as well, or in, uh, they actually state um, equal uh, resistance to a solid piece of one-inch wire. So you're, if you solder the connector properly, you won't notice a difference in the, in, as if you had a solid wire going to the device. So this is the key, though. Make sure you have a good solid uh, solder connection. So that's a good solder connection with decent fillets. Let's go ahead and put our shrink tubing on and wrap this up. Sliding our shrink tubing up. Uh, I use a small torch. Uh, be careful not to get too close with it. Uh, you, can, you can certainly exceed the temperature care, the, um, the temperature uh, limitations of the shrink tubing and either catch it on fire or, or melt it. So um, I just kind of get the torch going and wave it across. Once it starts to shrink a little bit, I verify that it's seated all the way up against my connector. Sometimes when they start to shrink equally, they shrink in from both ends. 
So I'll give a little bit of a, of a slide up towards the connector and I continue to shrink it. Candle works well, uh, lighter, if you can get your hands uh, around uh, the connector with the lighter sometimes it's hard to get into where you're working. So well, there we go. We have a uh, shrink wrapped, a shrink tube uh, shrunken connection soldered to our Dean's connector and that by all means is essentially a textbook connection. It's going to be solid as a rock mechanically, very stable, and electrically it's going to be as efficient as it gets. And that's all it takes to solder a connector. We know how to remove solder, we know how to apply solder. Tinning both surfaces is key, it's like using rubber cement, you want it on both surfaces for the best adhesion. And it also gets rid of all the impurities on both of the connector, both of the surfaces. So when you mate them together, all you have to do is reheat that solder and typically it'll flow right in together. It doesn't require a whole lot added once you make the, the mated joint. Um, so it's by far the best way to, to approach your soldering. Well, that's everything we have for you today. Hopefully this has been beneficial and you've found the tips and tricks you've needed to, to get past that learning curve with soldering. Soldering is a, a, a bit of a learned process, uh, but with a little bit of practice and some patience and following some basic rules, always tin both surfaces beforehand. Make sure you use a good quality uh, rosin core solder and um, uh, use ample temperature on your gun and you should have successful, uh, successful solder joints. If you have any questions that haven't been answered, feel free to go to our website at www.2bfly.com. And in the lower left corner of every page, you'll see the Ask To icon. You can click on that and send a message to us with your question. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. And um, uh, if it's beneficial to the masses, we'll post it in our facts section. And uh, it may even lead to us doing a specific clinic if you have a question that remains unanswered with the video coverage uh, that we've provided to date. So thanks for joining us, and good luck with your soldering projects.